Welcome to a new day and a new broadcast. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10. You've probably used Google, Facebook, and or Twitter within the last 24 hours. These companies' executives were recently asked to testify before the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. This part of Congress has the job of overseeing the government's intelligence work and programs. And one thing it's investigating is how people or organizations in other countries are using social media to influence U.S. politics. The American intelligence community has repeatedly accused Russia of trying to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Russia has repeatedly denied doing it. And last year, CNN investigated how people in the small European country of Macedonia use websites to spread fake news, unproven or just made-up stories, and make a relative fortune from the advertising. Yesterday's hearing on Capitol Hill was the third time in 12 months that someone from a major technology company appeared before the Senate committee. Not everyone who was invited showed up. Facebook sent its chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg. Twitter's chief executive officer, Jack Dorsey, appeared. But Google refused to send a high-profile executive. It offered its senior vice president of global affairs, but senators said that wasn't senior enough, so Google's place only had an empty chair. Still, the hearing went on. Sandberg and Dorsey discussed what their companies have done to prevent false information from being spread on Facebook and Twitter, to make it clearer where their political ads come from, and to say their companies are working more closely together to share information on foreign threats. But they both also regretted that their platforms had been used inappropriately in the past and that they hadn't been prepared, at least at first, to deal with it. Remember when Mark Zuckerberg said this? The idea that uh, you know fake news on Facebook, uh, of which you know it's a it's a very small amount of of, um, of the content, uh, influenced the the election in any way. I think is a, a pretty crazy idea. As we all know now, that idea wasn't actually that crazy. The U.S. government says Russian-backed disinformation campaigns exploited social platforms like Facebook to target Americans and divide the country. And the company has taken heat this year for not doing enough to stop it. The most important thing that I care about right now is making sure that no one interferes in the various 2018 elections around the world. But now, with November rapidly approaching, all eyes are on the 2018 midterms. And Facebook says it's deploying resources it didn't have two years ago to make sure meddling doesn't happen again. I'm our head of cybersecurity policy. And so I help drive our effort to counter information operations and election interference around the globe. Nathaniel Gleischer used to be a federal prosecutor for the Department of Justice. Now he's working for Facebook, where he's essentially their top troll hunter. What is it that's keeping you up at night right now as we, as we come into the final stretch of the campaign? The thing that I'm most focused on is how do we stay one step ahead of the threat actors because we know that they are continuing to innovate. We have manual investigators that are running sort of focused investigations and we think of these sort of like finding a needle in a haystack. And then second, we complement that with automated at scale work to detect and remove the less sophisticated threat actors. And if the manual work is like looking for needles in a haystack, then the other work is like shrinking the haystack. His team has already had some success. In July, Facebook thwarted a network of suspected Russian-linked accounts involved in organizing political events in the United States. What was it about that campaign that was different to what had been done previously? They definitely were more secure and more concerned about protecting their identity and more disciplined about it. They consistently used VPNs. They didn't link themselves to obvious geographic indicators like cell phones linked with a particular com country. Right? They were taking disciplined steps to make themselves harder to be identified. Have you found evidence of actors in the U.S. working on their behalf? If we can drive them to need to send people to the United States to work on their behalf, I actually think that's a win. Because what we've done is we've forced them to invest more to expose their actors. Our goal in this is to make this harder and to make this more expensive. We haven't seen clear indications of that, but as we make this harder and as we limit their ability to operate from a distance, these actors are gonna to have to make a decision. How much are they willing to commit? And the more they commit, the more they put their necks out. And that's part of the goal here.